Just a quick background about myself and why I just fly by the seat of my pants. In 2007, I was diagnosed with bone cancer in my brain and have had three brain surgeries and my memory is short, extremely short, like yesterday, what happened, kind of short. So I like to just talk to you from my heart and tell you our story versus writing it down and telling you somebody else's story. So first of all, um, I'm not to be the odd Seafeld, president of Park Plaza Cooperative, and to add all of that, I'm also president of Rock USA, Rock Association on um, the Rock USA side, and I am a director on APAC as well. And if anybody asks me to be on the seat of anything else, I'm gonna have to say you're gonna have to pay me because I would have to quit my job. <laughs> so I'm here to tell you a little bit about Park Plaza Cooperative, you obviously know how it got started in 2010 with our first letter. In 2011, we became a co-op. Um, one of the key factors here is how does the city and the state and the county and all of that entity, but mostly the city, how are they involved? When we're becoming a co-op as a citizen and as a resident, you don't know how they're involved to start off with because we have people like Rock Capital, Rock USA, North Country Foundation, lawyers we've never heard of, and anybody else you can imagine are doing all of the work up front for you and you're signing papers and saying yes or no. So in the beginning, I don't know how our city was involved other than possibly some permits, um, maybe having to do with anything that has to do with easements that are owned by the city because of uh, brand new setbacks when you're becoming a co-op you're also learning that you're out of code with so many things it's amazing when you're built in 1960 so it was um, challenging in the beginning but we got it we got through all of that and we had like I said a ton of help to do that so as you can see here are some pictures and that's signing day and we put a pen in our hand and we signed for $4.3 million worth of property. Actually, it was 4.1, I'm sorry. And then we walked away and we just said, oh my gosh, what did we just do? So we went to lunch and we celebrated and thought about what are the next steps. On the left bottom side of that is our mayor, Scott Lund. This was at our uh, congratulatory party. In the beginning, someone told me, and I will never forget this, pointed a finger at me and said, you will fail. I'm never gonna fail because you just challenged me. And we have almost 90 families who are gonna say the same thing. We're not gonna fail. We're gonna try our darndest to never fail. And we've made it this far. On the right hand bottom side, we actually do a lot of gardening. We found out that the Horticultural Society gave us gardens for free. They will do that every year, in case anybody doesn't know that. They can help your community do that. Um, and we got our first sign. Here is Senator Carolyn Lane, my biggest fan, and I'm her greatest fan. And who gets to call her on speed dial and say, hey, guess what? So, um, and on the top left is groundbreaking day with some officials along with some board members. We are doing groundbreaking for our $600,000 storm shelter with the great support of our city and also our state. We knew a long time ago that we were on the naughty list for having a storm shelter that did not comply. It was tiny, it flooded, it didn't have lighting, and it only had one door, and it was underground. And it could only fit a possible 50 people of the 200 that lived in our community. So I kept saying we have to do something. And finally something happened last August, we got on TV. And now we open a big can of worms for everybody in the state, and um, they're gonna have to get in compliance quickly. So we're building it, it's almost done. On the bottom left hand side, we want to be solarized. So there we are. We're learning about solar power. We've all signed contracts. We're waiting for the solar panels to be built right now. They're being built in St. Cloud. And then we will go live hopefully next year. We went on national um, NPR and did a story. The gentleman was with us for two weeks from Washington DC. Told the greatest story you could ever imagine. Rock USA calls me and says, have you heard the story? I said, no, is it bad? <laughs> we hadn't heard it yet. He said, I don't know, there's a section in there you could be a little worried about. So I said, oh well, we'll get over it, right? So we heard this story on December 26th, a couple of years ago, and everybody you could imagine from all over the place called, including Hawaii, how do we buy 
some of your land? How do we buy a home in your place? I just want to, I just want to summer there, or I want to winter there, whatever the case may be. It was so great. I had the youngest person put on Twitter that it was the most amazing story he had heard at age 26, and it made him cry. And it's going to make me cry, actually. But with that, Rock USA put a button on their site and said, please donate. The first $15,000 will go to Park Plaza Cooperative to purchase a, a playground. And that was part of the story because if there's anything that I wanted to do before I pass was get a playground for these children who are playing in the street because we didn't have one. Backpacks are given away at National Night Out. The whole entire seven years that we have been a cooperative except one year, we have managed to have National Night Out and give away backpacks, all of which we have managed to do ourselves. We've paid for them ourselves. We've gotten product donated ourselves. Um, you can't go to school without a backpack when you're low income. That's one of the biggest scares for families is how do you get shoes and clothes and backpacks and school supplies at the end of the year to send your children to school. They're proud kids. We've got some going to college now. We have some in the Explorers Club for the police department. We actually have three of them, two in Blaine and one in Fridley. So they're proud kids. And up here is craft day. We do craft days with the kids. The city mayor actually comes to quite a few of these things, stops in, calls, asks how you're doing. I try to always connect with him, and I invite him to every single thing so that way he can never say no. <laughs> and he doesn't say no. Top left is a tour from some national board leaders, including Paul Bradley, who is the president of Rock USA. They came out to take a tour of our community. We're small, we're old, but we're comfy, and we love it. On the right is Craft Day, and in the, on the bottom right-hand side, Mandy Meisner, who is now our um, commissioner for Anoka County, came and did an ice cream day with the residents. And this was during the time where she was running. But we didn't care if you're running, just come do ice cream day. <laughs> you know, it's great. APAC decided for two years in a row to use our freezing cold garage that does not have heat to hold their annual meeting. And boy, that's something else, right? It's freezing, believe me. So we always try to have hot food and hot coffee. <laughs> and uh, next year they're going to use our, or this year actually, they're going to use our community center. But as far as the city helping us, it, um, I think if any city has the ability to help out a manufactured home community that could possibly be going um, up for sale or possibly closing, or just even if you have one, connect with them, check and see if there's anything you can do for them, find out about their infrastructure, because I know this is supposed to be in your comprehensive plan as to whether or not a community stays in your community, which I just learned about this past year and found out that um, our comprehensive plan did not say some very nice things about Park Plaza Cooperative. They showed a really good picture. So I called them out on it, and they changed it. Because we have worked very, very hard to be who we are and to help others to also become that. Work with law enforcement. We are very close with law enforcement. We've brought crime down. We ask for extra patrols when it's needed. They're always willing to help without a problem. They've actually connected the community across the street from us with us, so we're going to start working with them. Um, the fire department, anytime we need some help making sure a resident is in compliance with the Minnesota Department of Health, we actually ask them to please just kind of take a drive through and check out their yard and see if they're in compliance and if they're not, make them be. Because that helps us get the tags not happen with the Minnesota Department of Health, which of, um, of that entity we call every once in a while and say, hey, we need some extra help, and they will come out. Um, for any of you who know your mayor or are a mayor in your city, reach out. Reach out and ask, are there little tiny grants we can help you with in the process? We didn't know how to be a board of directors. We had help. Are there any classes that we could take in the city that you could offer us? Are there any extra things we could learn about permitting that we might need as ourselves if we're doing some house repairs or anything. You know, it's, it's hard enough to be a board to add that onto your board plate to say, make sure you get a permit, make sure you check with your city, but who's really making sure they're doing that? So maybe the city can come out and do that. Have your fire department come out and do fire day. Teach people about smoke detectors. When you're in a mobile or manufactured home community, your home goes up faster than a regular house. You have seconds versus minutes to get out. 
So if we can teach them from the city how to do that in a proper way, that would be great. Um, I can't think of anything else offhand. Is there any questions? Individuals who own these different uh, big fashion home properties are not aware of some of the things that are available uh, uh, as far as funding, the co-ops, and so forth. What type of, uh, how, how, are, how are they being informed as far as what services are available to them uh, so they can, they can make contacts that make, make this exactly I, just to repeat the question, I think the question is how can we facilitate better communication between manufactured home communities and the city so that each are aware of the resources that works. And, the property owners. and the property owners uh, before they might reach conversion the property owners as well. Sean, yeah. I think you might be able to answer a little bit on that. My organization, North Country Cooperative Foundation, maintains relationships with park owners across the state of Minnesota. Um, we regularly meet with them. We go to the annual uh, convention. So, you know, we try, uh, we uh, are constantly looking for listings. So we try um, to, you know, work that side. Um, whenever we hear of a, a group of residents who are interested in becoming homeowners, we're willing to talk to them, um, look at the numbers for their community. I mean, we're willing to go anywhere and, and do whatever we can to make things work. I mean, even so, um, you know, it doesn't always work, but, um, but we'll take a crack at anything. And as far as being a cooperative, too, being the closest one to the Twin Cities as well, we get a lot of phone calls on how this happens and, and how can you help us. APAC probably would be a good one for that when we do the tables that um, they're all Parks Alliance for Change. That's one of the phone numbers, the very first phone number I ever called in the 90s to have lights put in to get help against my owner who wouldn't do anything. So that's another entity that you could use. Um, calling co-ops that are in existence right now and maybe connecting with them. And just physically, there's nothing better than doing face-to-face -face, and I've learned that really well. And I've also learned this when I own my business that if you don't capture someone in the first 10 seconds, they're going to walk away. And so always that face-to-face -face contact is so important. Don't be afraid as a city to, you know, do some outreach. Uh, have open town halls within the community itself, the actual um, manufactured home community. Nobody's doing that right now, but we're talking about this a lot. I'm advocating for it a lot. I need people to see that we're important people. We, I never saw a bigger turnout in voter people. I was a delegate and I went to my local school and when I started seeing people come from my own community to vote, that was amazing. I said, I don't care who you're voting for, but I'm going to hug you because you came to vote. And it was great to see that. They're great people. We just don't make a ton of money. That's our problem. And that's never going to change, but it's the way it is. So reach out. I, I, I couldn't stress that enough. I mean, if my mayor would have came to me right away, when I first moved in there and maybe said, hey, how's it going, even though I knew him? It could have been a different story. But he was my friend when I lived in a 3,200 square foot home in his neighborhood. So it totally was a different aspect in life. Well, thank you so much, Natividad. I really look forward to